Hey guys, Will here with Crazy Studio, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to create a really cool dinosaur scroll stopper inside of Crazy Studio 3.0. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and take a look at what you're gonna be creating. All right, so we've got a couple different elements going on. We've got an animated dinosaur, we've got the background, we've got our text here, and then we've got a white box. So we've got several things and factors to account for when we're gonna be creating this. All right, so let's go ahead and delete this scene here and let's start from scratch. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is I need to adjust the resolution on my timeline here. So right now um, I'm set to use standard, but we wanna go ahead and hit square. All right, so 1080 by 1080. Um, standard, we've got full HD and that's not the route I wanna be in. So I wanna make sure that I am starting off in a square platform because I wanna make this a post for um, maybe Facebook, maybe Instagram. So I wanna give it that square look, right? All right, so I've got that set and now I can come back to my media here. Now my next step is that I need to import in a picture, right? So what's my background gonna be? You could easily use, I go to the studio section and go to backgrounds and choose from a wide array of awesome backgrounds from within Create Studio, or you can bring in backgrounds that you currently have that you wanna utilize for your project. So I have a Jurassic Park background here that I'm gonna drag in in my media, drag that into my timeline, and I've got it set up. Now to stay organized, I will right click this and hit rename, and let's just call it BG for background. And now I'm in a good starting point for my scroll stopper, right? All right, so next up, I need to add a rounded rectangle. So I'm gonna select the plus button up here at the top and then come over here and select on rectangle. And let's go ahead and close this. And then let's change the color of this. Let's expand these out to be about 11 seconds or so. So let's go about right here. It's looking pretty good. Now let's select our rounded rectangle and then let's change the color of it. Right now it's this blue color. Let's select it and let's make it white. All right. So what we need to do now is I'm gonna go ahead and resize my rounded rectangle and let's go ahead and bring this down, center it up there and then drag out the sides so they are at the threshold of the canvas there on both left and right sides. And then we can go ahead and bring this guy down a little bit right there. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my background and I'm gonna start my background when it's about right here, okay? So I can always scale this down if I need to um, and then drag it down and we're gonna go about right here. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. All right, so just so I can reframe this and that white um, rounded rectangle that we have in there is taking up the space inside the square so you won't see that the picture is sitting above it, right? So it's looking pretty good and you can always move it around, center it up, depending on what kind of picture you're using too at the same time, um, you may need to reposition it to, to get it in the spot that you want. All right, so, so far so good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my background and there's two ways to do this. I need to add some keyframes. So I wanna do some scale keyframes so I can, on the keyboard, I can press S or I can go and select my background and click add animation and then it'll open up and I'd be able to choose which properties I would like, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do it that way. Um, hit scale and then now I can drag this out a little bit and let's, if you click here on the center line here, you can move your keyframes over if you can't get to that first one. I'm gonna go ahead and select that first keyframe and again, remember I chose scale and I'm gonna leave this one as my starting point, right? So it's gonna be at 57% scale. Now I'm gonna come over to my second keyframe and I'm gonna adjust it. So now I'm gonna do a little, little zoom in. So I'm gonna have it do this type of thing right here. And we're gonna go about right there. It's looking pretty good. And then we're gonna stop, all right? And then I'm gonna take my last keyframe and just drag it out to about almost the end of the clip here. And then let's drag that first keyframe back to the beginning. So now when I press play, uh, actually one thing before I press play is I'm gonna double click these keyframes again and I wanna adjust the easing for a second. So I click the easing and right now it's set to smooth as my easing points for both the in and the out. I'm gonna choose linear, right? Again, you can play with the different types of easing that, have, um, that we have in here, but whatever works best for your project is what I recommend you use, right? Um, so I'm gonna choose linear, come back. Now let's press play. And there we go, now we got some nice little movement and now we're ready to add some text. All right, so let's go over here to the top again to the plus icon and we're gonna add text. And I'm gonna drag this down so we can see it over the white so it's easy to read. And let's pull this to the zero line and drag it out so it's the length of our entire session here. And now what I can do is I can double click in here and I'm going to type in here uh, in all caps, whatever a headline you want, but I'm gonna put your attention grabbing, right? 
and then the second layer text will be headlines. All right, so let's go over here to our font and we're gonna keep it this black con sans. You can always go up here and search for multiple fonts or different types of fonts that you're looking for. We're gonna keep the weight regular. Our color is gonna be black and we're gonna leave the alignment centered and we're gonna take our scale and let's start off with about 47. Let's start there. Um, and then let's adjust our spacing and let's go uh, 111, right? So that's looking pretty good so far. All right, so let's go ahead and add another layer of text here. So go back up to the plus icon, select your text, and then let's go ahead and drag this down here into the white so we can uh, see a little better. And let's type in all caps. This one's gonna say headline, all right? So now what I'm gonna do is again, let's pull this to the zero line and let's drag this out to the length of the rest of our clips here. And let's come up here with this selected. Again, it's gonna be the Black Con Sans font. Um, weight's gonna be regular. Our color is gonna be different though. So let's select our color and you have the option in the color wheel, color wheel here to choose um, any color and hues that you like. I'm gonna choose this green color that I got in here. I'm gonna come over here, it's gonna be centered and our scale is gonna be, let's go with 155 with this guy. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and then just recenter him and drag him down so he's nice and even there. All right, and then our spacing, I'm gonna go ahead and make our spacing, let's go with 16. All right, just to widen it out just a little bit. All right, so that's the setup that we've got. We've got our background, we've got our text going, and we do have some scale keyframes going on with our Jurassic Park background, so it's looking really nice. All right, so now we're ready to add our dinosaur scroll stopper. All right, so I'm gonna go over here to my studio section and I'm gonna search up T-Rex and there is my T-Rex scroll stopper. And if you haven't downloaded him, just put your cursor there and hit the download icon that shows up at the bottom right corner and then drag him into your timeline. And now we're ready to rock and roll. All right, so I've got the dinosaur here and if I scroll through this, you'll see that he comes up and he's, he's a little out of alignment with my uh, text box here, right? So let's punch in a little bit so you can see. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna make sure that the T-Rex is in the frame of my Facebook aspect ratio, right? Which he is, right? He's totally square. Now I need to zoom in a little bit and I need to adjust the white box, right? So let's go ahead and scroll down. I'm gonna go here to my rounded rectangle. Now I'm just gonna take that, that top line there and just drag it right about there. All right, so now if I punch back out, now we can see that he's gonna come out and he does his thing and he's looking pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and add some sound effects now. All right, so what we can do is we can go to our uh, music section, go to effects and we can search up Dinosaurus or Stegosaurus, sorry, um, Roar. So again, if you haven't downloaded it, you would hit the download icon underneath Stegosaurus Roar there on the right hand side and let's drag that into our timeline. And then now we've got a roar, so let's line this up so that it plays at the appropriate time. So what I can do is I could take my cursor here and scrub across, and he's about to roar right there, so we can move our sound effect about right here. And then you can also adjust your volume, which we can see if we need to in a second, but let's see what that looks like. All right, so, so far so good. Now to adjust the volume on this audio file, all I need to do is select my Stegosaurus roar, Come over here to my settings and volume and just take that down. Let's go to about 50% or so. All right, so now when I play this back. All right, looking pretty good. And of course you can go in and tweak these as you need to and make adjustments. Dinosaur backs away and fades out of frame. So again, it's a really cool way to create these dinosaur scroll stoppers inside of Create Studio 3.0. Now, one thing you can note is if I select everything inside of my timeline here, so I've got this, I've got the text, and I've got my background here. I can right click this, hit group, and um, we can rename this guy. And let's just call this Dino Scroll Stopper, right? So now what I can do is I can right click that, master group, and then I can go to um, save to my scenes. So then now inside of my scenes, I have this to utilize for any other future project. So I don't have to rebuild this from scratch. I can just continue to use the same scene that I've already built. And you can do this with multiple scenes too. All right, so again, it's super powerful, really awesome way to create these types of things inside of Create Studio. Um, so hopefully you got some really cool quick tips out of here. Can't wait to see what y'all create. And I'll catch y'all in the next tutorial.